good morning students uh, today we will be discussing radio wave transmissions already we discussed the last class uh, physical way of, way of transmitting data from one computer to another computer so this class we will be learning how data can be transmitted through the radio, wa radio waves and on the, also through satellite communications we will learn all this one by one so first let us take a radio wave transmission so in radio wave transmission what happens means already you are familiar with this type of uh, usage of radio wave signals maybe when you take a, a television or radio so they will be set up a particular frequency so with that frequency they are able to access voice or uh, pictures or videos nowadays you might have seen so uh, normal radio the radio you know, that same things the same technology has been used here but instead of uh, they, uh, what we send? We send digital signals, any type of digital. That is, we send and receive through the digital signals. But the we have an encoder and decoder which converts this digital signal into radio wave signals. It's a sine wave, and then again convert back to digital signals. That's encoder and decoder we'll be using. And both we have two things. One is a, t a transmitter, another is a receiver. The both will be used by both the devices. One for sending the signals radiating or sending the signals other will be receiving the signals so let us we learn about this radio wave signals the transmission making use of radio frequency is termed as radio wave transmission a transmission normally definition will not be a definition so using radio frequencies we are making a transmission of data means then it is called radio wave transmission so any radio what we discuss radio wave transmission has two parts or two setups. One is the transmitter and also the receiver. The transmitters take some sort of message. It could be the sound of someone's voice, pictures for TV set. For TV, it is only sound and pictures. So data for radio modem or whatever it is, it is we use data, whatever we use, any digital that is we use for radio modem we'll be using. So with the modem only, we are able to encode and decode. So that's what we are. The transmitter takes some sort of message, any digital type of message for computer communication, encodes it to onto sine wave. It encodes, it converts into sine wave, and it is transmit with the radio waves. So using that modem, so it will be converting into sine wave. And then it's, with the radio waves, the data has been sent, the receiver. The normally other end, the receiver receives the radio waves and decodes it, again converting back to the digital signal. The message from one sine wave, and the message from the sine wave, it receives. So in the radio waves and decodes the message from the sine wave, it receives. So both transmitter and receiver will use antenna. The receiver uses antennas to radiate and capture, to send and receive. This radio signals we use antennas so this is how it functions there are some advantages of using this radio wave technology or radio wave transmission so what is the advantage it means it's a mobility wherever you want you can can use it and also the land the physical laying of cable the problem which may occur due to the maintenance of cable uh, these are all uh, quite difficult and also some terrain areas so hill station maybe it's very difficult to establish a connections using a physical connections that's using laying cable and all this is difficult let us learn what are the advantages of this radio wave transmission so radio wave transmissions offer mobility that is it can be catched anywhere so it need not be a, a particular place so like mobile so you can use mobile anywhere wherever you want but earlier landline form means it's in a fixed place that's it you can imagine so in, in the fixed means only where cable is connected only that place you are able to use the radios, uh, what we call uh, phone earlier. And now today mobile you use it wherever you want. Exactly similar way radio wave transmission offers where your computers could be placed anywhere, wherever you want. Because of radio wave transmission, they are not physically connected. That's a mobility, portable. It's in, in other words, you can carry any, anywhere you want. So within the radio wave, a, a frequency available. Within that range, you, you can use, that's uh, advantages. It proves cheaper than digging trenches for laying cables and maintaining the repeaters and cables, uh, repeaters and cables, if cables get broken by variety of causes. So this is going to be very expensive maintaining and also 
it is a cheaper. So normally when you take a radio wave transmission, it's become cheaper. Normally you take, uh, think of uh, physical connections using cable means. So we have to digging the trenches. So where we have to lay the cables and maintaining the repeaters and cables. So repeaters, because for a longer distance, we need amplifier. These uh, cables will be losing the strength. So we have to rebroadcast. We have to amplify and rebroadcast. To do this, we need the repeaters. That's also expensive. And also it's very difficult to, you know, broken cable, you know, where it breaks and you know, getting uh, rectifying is also quite difficult. If cables get broken by a variety of causes, normally what happens, there are many reasons the cables may broke. Then there's a problem, there's no network. So these are all very difficult. But the radio wave signals, we do not have these things. That's our advantage. And one more, it, it offers from freedom. It offers freedom from land acquisition rights that are required for laying, re repairing the cables. So if it is goes, you know, laying somebody's land, so we have to take the permission from them. There's a long land acquisition. We have to take the land. And also for uh, laying, first for laying, and also for repairing the cable. Something happens, again, you go and dig and uh, uh, fix the problems. They're also, it's quite difficult. So that is, we have to ask them again and again, permissions. And it offers a case of communication over a difficult terrain. It's also some type of communication. So over a terrain, it's not possible to, you know, do this uh, physical connection. So there also we can use, it offers a case of communication. So one of the method of, one of the uh, better method of communications over terrain. So these are the advantages of uh, radio wave transmissions. Now we have a disadvantages. So what are the disadvantages? So radio wave communication is insecure communication. That's the main point because the, they can be transmitted via the you know, signals. Anybody can cap capture and receive this and they may modify the content. So it's not a secured way of transmission of data. So if there's something uh, very important data that could be stolen easily by other people. So it's not secured. So radio, radio wave propagates, uh, radio propagation is susceptible to weather effects like rain, thunder, storms, etc. So normally what happens there, they have a low bandwidth, no, no, no. they have like, uh, you know, due to weather effects, they may, the, they may lose data. So they propagate uh, in, the, in the form of sine wave, what we discussed. So when there is a, uh, uh, like weather, uh, heavy rain or thunder, so due to that, this, they may lose, the, they, they may collapse, then the data may be lost. So it cannot be reached. That's why you might have seen a lot of disturbance when during radio when you are listening radio if rain comes and you might have seen a lot of disturbance and also television we have to set up close the setup box and you know, once the rain stops then we have to use so in the similar way the same problem occurs when you have a computers and it is connected through the uh, radio transmission uh, radio wave transmission so then it becomes very difficult that is uh, there are certain radio wave propagation is susceptible for weather effects that's a rain thunder storms etc so these are the disadvantages and security of such communication links is almost non-existent. So even so, the equipment has many advantages and is widely used by ta taxi uh, repair and courier and delivery service. No, no, this is why they have used this. Security of such communication links is almost non-existent. Even so, the equipment has many advantages and widely used by taxi repair, courier and delivery services. This is radio wave signals may be used in that places also. So next we have one more is called a satellite communication. So what is satellite communication? It's, I think most of you uh, understood uh, nowadays we are using satellite communication. So radio wave can be classified by frequency and wavelength. So radio wave based on the frequency and wavelength. So when the frequency is higher than 3 gigahertz, it is named as a microwave. So when the frequency is more than 3 gigahertz, then it is called as a Microwave. Satellite communication is a special case of microwave relay system. So it uses microwave relay system. Satellite communication uses a, a synchronous satellite to relay the radio signals transmitted from the ground station. Ground station, it normally depends on, normally what happens, it uses a microwave. That's a radio wave signals. So it will be more than 3 gigahertz and it is transmit, it mainly depends like from the ground, it, that's a ground station, it sends the signals. And once it reaches the destination, like it goes to, and from the satellite again, it will be come back to the ground where we are receiving <coughs> other end. 
we'll discuss that one in recently the use of wireless communication has gained more popularity compared to traditional fixed wire uh, terrestrial network so we don't that's not, it's very there are many advantages already we discussed satellite and microwave communication network features the time saving fast implementation correct of course and broad coverage characteristic and broad coverage it covers a huge larger area so it provides voice fax data and video services as well as email so any type of internet application could also be performed so it provides voice fax data or any any digital communication can be established with the satellite communication when a fixed terrestri- uh, what we have fixed wire communication network so are crushed by disaster many reasons so the satellite and microwave system as a in that case the satellite could also be used as an emergency backup facility as a an alternative method for communications so normally we have both a physical connection and also satellite so if this something happens then also it is a, it proves to be very advantages so next let us learn about in the satellite communication the earth station that is consisting of satellite dish so where through the dish we send with we are sending so that function as an antenna the dish works like antenna and communicate communication equipment we have a communication equipment to transmit and receive data both to transmit and receive data we have a uh, equipments from satellite passing over it so normally through the satellite we pass so one we have a device to send and receive again a number of communication satellites owned by so this kind of there are number of communication satellites we have many satellites owned by both governments and also private <coughs> organization so they are placed uh, stationary or between 23000 22300 miles above the earth surface so these satellites acts as a relay stations for a communication signals the satellites accept data or signals transmitted from the ground station and amplify them and retransmit them to the other side of the earth only in one step the satellite is very simple so it accept a data a signals and rebroadcast it so again it amplifies and resend it to the other station where we have a dish and receives by this is a very simple one so most communication satellites have a multiple independent reception so most uh, satellites normally have multiple many independent reception and transmission they can send and receive one not only one place many receive, uh, reception and transmission devices known as a transponders these transponders are responsible for accepting and sending the signals that's main reason so in a commercial uh, satellite communication so a single transponder so we have only one transponder is usually capable of handling full color communication television transmission today what we have seen uh, color television uh, programs what you will be watching there is only one transponder is enough to send and rebroadcast so send and receive so with uh, it is complete with audio also so digital uh, whatever today is uh, we have seeing of uh, television and programs that is done by a single transponder so the transponders for data transmission may even larger for data transfer because digital it may include all the things audio video images and also some forms that market satellite communication service own satellite some may be having own but for uh, computer communications we may use a larger uh, transpon- transponders so or may be some they will be run by own forms satellite or some may be some part of the lease they may take like for rent uh, some satellite providers so through them they'll take uh, uh, the provide and facilities in smaller units and ultimate, uh, ultimate uh, to the users normally what happens they you can lease uh, some satellites uh, some portion of the satellite for ever applications so maybe owned by some people and they may give for you as a lease or for rent the security in satellite transmission is usually provided by the coding and decoding so data encoding and encryption and decrypt, disc, uh, decrypt uh, we'll discuss that one later on when we talk about uh, the security of computer networks so coding and decoding so through this we can uh, we use additional equipment or device to perform the security that is encoding and decoding the non satellite communication has a lo- number of advantages already we have known about radio wave signal advantage the same advantage but in a broader manner that's all so almost similar so let us learn the advantages of satellite communication the area coverage so normally through the satellite the area coverage through the satellite transmission is a quite large 
so it covers a large area of physical area you might have seen so where and all we can even use the satellite communications the laying and maintenance of intercontinent cable is difficult and expensive and this is where the satellite proves to be the best alternative so intercontinental so we have from one continental to another we have to connect cable means underlying the cable through the you know, ocean and the, there are it's very difficult now it is why in that those places it's a best alternative so normally that's why we use satellite communication we do not know need that kind of uh, connection that's advantages the we the heavy usage of intercontinental traffic makes the satellite com commercial uh, satellite uh, communication uh, attractive or commercially it is uh, attractive because what happens so normally you are using means uh, too much of data traffic what we have right now having inter intercontinental uh, cable connections so because we are using nowadays where we make many trading and all those things so you know, now data transmission is more so as a result what happens a traffic data traffic is very high so now this satellite attracts because satellite communication we can provide uh, data uh, traffic and we can faster way of data communication and also it covers a larger area that's why it becomes very important that's advantages of satellite communication satellite can cover larger area of earth this is particularly useful for a sparsely populated areas where we have we, um, large amount of people or population so there we will be proves to be very efficient so there are some disadvantages of satellite communicate satellite communication so uh, technological limitation preventing the deployment of large high gain antennas on the satellite platform so technological limitation so we cannot use uh, you know, for large high gain antennas on the satellite we have to use a dish your own dish and receiving the signals and rebroadcasting so all this was was a difficult and so disadvantages overcrowding of available bandwidth due to low antenna gains normally what happens means we may use many overcrowding of available bandwidths due to low antenna so whatever you are receiving from the satellite uh, like uh, maybe very high but uh, the, the antennas receiving is comparatively very slow so as a result what happens it the bandwidth is becomes a slow overcrowded so this also a drawback of satellite communication the one more is the investment the cost the high investment and insurance cost associated with significant probability of failure so that's will be high investment and cost and insurance so cost associated of failure if anything happens and goes means you have lost the huge bulk of amount of money will be lost that's why it's an investment is quite high and also high atmospheric loses above 30 gigahertz limit carries the frequency so so more than th uh, 30 gigahertz so as a problem so high atmospheric losses so these are the disadvantages of uh, satellite communication so we have other unguided media so a simple one so it's normally used uh, infrared laser we'll discuss all these things so apart from microwaves radio waves and satellites apart from these the other unguided media are also very popular so these are all infrared and laser i think you may be so your remote works using infrared and laser beams exactly the same technology could also but it is unguided it's not secure but still it is you know within a sh shorter distance maybe within a building or within a, uh, some some places which is a less area so there you can transmit so they normally these signals will not uh, penetrate through the wall they will bounce back so within the room only within the class room only we can use within a building only not outside the building so this type of this uh, this type of transmission uses ir that is a infrared light to send the data the infrared light transmits data through the air that is and it can propagate through the throughout the room bouncing of surfaces so normally it propagates through the room and but will not penetrate the walls that's a limitation the infrared transmission as as a has become a common in pds that's a personal digital assistance pds example and l devices like palm pilots etc so these in the small places within a, a building so where we need to transmit so there we use this the infrared transmission is considered to be a secure one so only two devices normally because it is within the building, campus only or within the building only it will not go outside obviously it will be secure only the known people will be able to exchange data so therefore it is a more secured one so there's something about infrared communications and we have a laser so the laser transmission requires a direct 
line of sight. So that's very important. So it is a unidirection. So like a microwave, but has a much higher speed than the microwaves, the lesser transmission uh, requires the use of laser transmitter, a photosensitive receiver at each end. So normally it requires photo because light in the form of light means so it has to be uh, photosensitive materials at both ends, so receiver and sending. The laser transmits like point to point, that's why it's a unique direction. Point to point transmissions typically between the buildings, but laser have a certain disadvantage which is it can be adversely affected by weather, so that's also disadvantages. This is something about laser. Let us learn about, already we have discussed about whether it's uh, uh, through the radio waves or microwaves or through satellite communications or maybe it's a physical connection. How data will be sent from one computer to another computer, switching, that is we have a circuit switching or switching techniques. How data can be, or it's, it is connected by key, cable or it's maybe connected through the uh, satellites or microwaves or any signals. Uh, IR. But how data sent and will be received, there are three methods. So different methods of switching techniques are employed to provide a communication between two computers. That is, one we have a circuit switching, we have a message switching and also we have a packet switching. So let us learn about circuit switching. Already so as a circuit switching means, then the circuit switching, so it establishes a physical connection from one computer to another computer. That's, it has to form a circuit. So once a physical connection exists between the source computer and the destination computers and then this dedicated path must exist until da data transmission takes place. So once data transmission is over, then the, this, this is, is broken, that this can be, circuit can be removed, that automatically it is disconnected. So that is, but physical connection has to be established in order to, that's a circuit has to be formed through that circuit, the signals can be sent and so that is what circuit switching. In this technique, the first the complete physical connection, that's what I am thinking. So physical connection between two computers has to be established and the data are transmitted from source computer to destination, destination computer. That is when the computer places a telephone call example. So the, the switching equipment within the telephone system seeks out a physical copper path. Normally we have a coaxial cable, optical fibers today. Uh, all the way from sender telephone to the receiver telephone once this circuit is formed. So the important property of this switching technique is, is to set up an end-to-end -end connection. That's a, a path, a circuit is formed between the computers before data can be sent. So that is how it is works. That is something about the circuit switching. So normally what happens, a physical connection is established from the, uh, we have like, uh, from source computer to destination computers, like through the modem, so it established and link has been connected. There's a dedicated path. The connection has to be established, like end-to-end -end connection. So once this has been established, then you can send data. So next we have a message switching. In message switching, what happens means just a instead of no need to establish a physical a physical connection. So we append the destination address and it will be transmitted over the network. So it will be transmitted through uh, different computers and receiving and it sees the destination address and it stores forwards. So and sometimes it's also called as store forward technique or store forward network also. Let us learn about this a message switching technique. In this technique, the source computer sends the data or message to the switching office first, which stores the data in the buffer. Temporary buffer means temporary memory. Then it looks for a free link to another switching office, like one computer, one office, that's one computer to another, and then sends the data to this office. Like this, it goes on. This process is continued, continued until the data is delivered to the destination computer. So it's like one by one. It goes to the next computers and checks is it the same or not. And owing to its working principle, it is also known as store and forward. That is the first stores in switching office and forward later, so one jump at a time. So this, this is something all, this is most commonly used, earlier they are using this technique also, message, uh, tech, message uh, switching technique. Next one is we have a packet switching. In a packet switching what happens means, it's a, a type of uh, message switching only, but what happens means in message switching we have a limited capacity. So when you have a larger means we cannot, the bandwidth will not support. So here what we do in the packet switching means we broke, we have a larger message will be divided into number of small packets and they'll be transmitted. 
through the communication media. So when they transmit and their order maybe gets crumbled and first packet may reach last and last packet may reach first and this order has to be uh, reconstructed. So we have a device for that that will be reconstructed. That is how it works. That's how most commonly used is a packet switching. It doesn't care about the bandwidth because the data will be sent in a small packets. So now with the message with switching, there is no limit on block size. In contrast, packet switching places a tight upper limit of block size. That's a small message is divided into a small number of packets. A fixed, a fixed size of packet which can be transmitted across the network specified. So that's how it will be. That's what I said. They, have made, they give a little bit lesser content. So it's a here what happens means they, they break the message into small number of packets. That's why they block size. And this will be transmitted with the same message what you are sending. Maybe uh, imagine it's 100 MB of uh, something, some video. You cannot send 100 MB over the physical connection. Like for example, bandwidth not supporting. What they may means they make this a uh, 10 MB, 10 packets, and they'll be sent all these 10. And when they send, they may reach the destination via different paths. There may be different communication uh, uh, cable or different may way of communicating. And because this 100 MB has been divided into 10, 10, 10 MB, so the order gets crumbled. So maybe last, the first packet may reach last or some, something. So there we have to be reconstructed. So that's how a packet switching technique works. So that's one of the popular way of communicating, a switching technique. Next, we have our communication modes. How communication takes place, so either it's one way or two way or a simultaneous two way, that is what communication mode. So when we have a two computers, so can, only one computer can send and other computer receive or one can send alternatively or both can send at simultaneously. That is what we are discussing about the communication mode, how we can send and receive. There is a simplex, off duplex and full duplex. The communication mode defines in which data can flow depending upon the type of media used. They are like simplex, off duplex and full duplex. So let us learn about simplex. So in, on the simplex channel, so there's only one interface that is a transmitter and all other interfaces are receiver. The channel full bandwidth is completely available for signal traveling from the transmitter to the receivers. And this channel transmitting interface cannot receive and receiving interface cannot transmit. For example, radio, TV uses a simplex channel. In a simplex channel, what happens means there's only one interface, one interface that is a transmitting, that transmit. And all other interfaces remaining, all are receivers. The full bandwidth, the channel full bandwidth is always available for the signal traveling from, from the transmitter to the receivers. And one more, they cannot receive this other end on this channel, the interface, one who, uh, receives, they cannot transmit. And receiving interface cannot transmit. For example, you can see a radio, you can watch radio, uh, you can listen to radio, but you cannot send, you cannot talk to the other people. So in TV is also same, just you can watch the programs. So one way communication. This TV and radio broadcasting uses the simplex channels. That's a one way communication. Next we have a off duplex. So on this channels, each interface works as a transmitter and receiver. Both can send and receive, but not simultaneously, alternatively. But if only one interface can transmit at a time. The full band, again same, the full channel bandwidth is available to the transmitting interfaces, which will not receive while transmitting. So when it is transmitting, it cannot receive, but when it is receiving, it cannot transmit. Generally, it uses walkie-talkies. So walkie-talkie will use this, and also marine and aviation uses this off duplex channel. You might have seen when I, in the walkie talkies, I keep talking and I have to press the button. So it becomes like a receiver or transmitter. Once I unlock this, so it becomes like a, uh, a receiving interface. That's how we can transmit and receive, but not simultaneously. One will be also, it's like uh, off duplex. So not two way simultaneously, alternatively. That's something about off duplex. So next we have a full duplex. In full duplex, what happens? You can send and receive at the same time. So example, tele telephone communication that uses a full duplex. This channel has two ends. Normally, to accomplish this uh, two-way communication, both, normally the channel has two ends. So each serving as a transmitter and receiver. Both will be there, transmitter and receiver. So each interface can transmit and receive at the same time. 
So the modern telephone system uses full duplex channel. That's, uh, that's why we are able to uh, talk and listen at the same time. It is more expensive due to hardware for increased number of channel bandwidth. So it's uh, very expensive compared to simplex and off duplex or full duplex. That's something about uh, full duplex. So we have a network devices. So the most importantly, to form a network, what are the different types of devices we need? So we learn one by one. So most important is uh, modems. I think whenever we want to form a computer network means the people will ask for the modem. So we have to buy the modems. What is this more modem means? Modulator, demodulator. So I was talking about the electrical signal has to be converted into digital signals. Again, this digital signal has to be converted into electrical signals. So when you're sending from a source computer to destination means depending on the type of media used, the modem will convert. Uh, if it is a digital signal will be converted into, if it's a cable means electrical signals or if it is a light signals, if it is a optical fibers and we have antenna, it may be encoded and decoded if satellite communication, depending on the type of media used, that's why it's a modulator and demodulator. Encode like it's a converting uh, to any type, that's a digital signal to other signals, from other signals to digital signal, demodulator. So that's a modem is very important. Without modems, you cannot form a computer network. So modems allow you to combine the power of your computer with the global reach of telephone system. So because ordinary telephone cannot carry a digital information, that's what very important. So modem changes the digital data from your computer into analog, analog data signals, a format that can be carried by a telephone lines. So in a similar manner, the modem receiving the call of the other end, the changes the analog signal back to a digital signal to the computer. So this shift of digital data into analog data back again allows the two computers to communicate with one another called modulation and demodulation. So with the modem, you can send faxes to the office or important customers without leaving your computer. And with the online or internet connections, so you can share uh, recipes with the fellow uh, government, say catch up with the latest news, say, view the whatever you're doing on internet today, so that is possible. Very simple way. So through the World Wide Web, we can do all those things. That's indirectly, at internet, it works what the classes we are doing now is also because of this modulation and demodulations. With the help of modem only, we can perform this. So let us learn the working of modem. Already we told about how it works. So modem converts digital signals, audio frequency, anything, any digital signals to AF audio frequency, uh, which are the frequency range that telephone lines uh, can transmit. Also, it can convert transmitted tones back to a digital information. So after the power is turned on, on data terminal, so we call data terminal equipment and DC, data communication equipment, data terminal equipment. So these abbreviations are very important. Learn these abbreviations. Data, DTE means data terminal equipment, data communication equipments. The terminals runs for a self-check. That's why when you switch on the modems, two lines, uh, there will be four lights keep blinking. It assures the data transmission is ready. Once they stop uh, blinking, so that is ready to send the signals to tell the modem that is ready. That's how it. So when the modem is powered up and ready to transmit data, the modem will assert the data set ready. So this becomes a DS, DSR. So, so to, to the terminal. That's a mistake. So under the manual or terminal control, the modem dial up the computers on the other end. If the computer is available, it will send back the specified tone. So then it forms a network. So now when the terminal has a character ready to send, so it will, at, it will assert the request to send, RTS, request to send signal to the modem. The modem assures or asserts its carrier detect signal, CD signal to the terminal to indicate that it has established contact with the computer. So when the modem is fully ready to transmit the data, it asserts a clear to send CTS signal back to the terminal. The terminal then sends the serial data characters to the modem. So when the terminal has sent all the characters, it needs to make RTS signal S ready to send signal through I. This causes modem to unasserted its CTC signal and stop transmitting similar handshakes occurs between the modem and the computer on the other side. So this is how it normally how it works means. So when you have, there is a lot of uh, communication like uh, digital, uh, because we have to send them, because both computer has to be 
like computer and the system and also through the uh, what we call other de other device in the sense like modem and computers and telephone connections so it has to make a lot of uh, uh, confirmation between the data like i want to send the computer means our computer is sending so the modem has to set there are many things many way of sending so all this that's why we have a, a, a digital uh, like data terminal equipment uh, data communication equipments or set on data set ready yes we can send and also we have a rt request to send and carrier detects all, so all it checks and then it's like both or everything is ready means then it can like like and similar to and check occur between modem and the computers i am ready and you are also ready like synchronized you can send and receive that's how it works it's like when you switch on the modem these sort of things takes place so and once it is ready and you can able to send and receive uh, that's uh, or connected to the internet so there are two types of modems one is called internal modems the modems are fixed within the computers that's why they are called internal modems we have external modems these modems are connected externally to the computers or other peripheral or connected through the outside we may be usb through the, we have a ethernet card through that ethernet card we connect external modems so next we learn about something about ethernet card so as mentioned earlier ethernet is a lan so local area architecture developed by Xerox Corp in association with the Digital Equipment Corporation and Intel. So Ethernet uses a bus or star topology and can support data transmit rate up to 10 Mbps. The computers that are a part of Ethernet have to install a special card called Ethernet card. So a card means it's a hardware circuit that has to be installed. Then only you can form a computer network, local area network. you know maybe in the, in our college most of the colleges will have a ethernet univer computer also we have ethernet through that only we can connect to the computers now we use a usb so this is, may not be needed for to this computers anyhow but ethernet card also we needed a special card for a local area network through the local area network you can connect to the internet without internet card also you can connect. but most of the computers or laptops will comes with the ethernet card so so now let us learn about an ethernet card contains a connection for either coaxial cable or twisted pair of cables or for both if it is designed for coaxial cable the connection will will be bnc if it is designed for a twisted pair so this is the name it will have a rj45 connection so some ethernet cards also contain aui Uh, connector that's a type of connectors uh, this can be used to attach coaxial twisted pair or fiber optic cables to ethernet ethernet cord directly so when this connection is used there is always external transfer transfer receiver attached we have external transfer to the workstation where we are sending so these days many computers include an option for pre installed ethernet cord so that's already we can install and comes with pre installed already it comes so that's something about ethernet card so depending on we have uh, both optical fibers or maybe twisted pair of cables or depending on that we can have a uh, different types of ethernet cards most of the computers comes with pre installed already ready made you can just use them that's all but without this ethernet card we are unable to connect it to the network where it's difficult to form a computer network we cannot form a computer network so next we have a uh, hub so what is hub means it's uh, like hardware so where all components all computer network uh, devices are connected to the one place through this all communication takes place so let us learn hub is a hardware de- hardware it's a hardware it's like a circuit used to connect several computers together that's used to connect several computers together a hub that contains a multiple independent but connected modules of network and inter network equipments all connected and interconnected everything has to be connected to the hub a similar term is uh, used as uh, concentrator we have a concent- concentrator a concentrator is a device that provides a central uh, connection point for cables from workstations servers and peripherals in a star topology a twisted pair of wire is run from each workstation to central concentration now only what happens means hub is like one place where all your computer network maybe workstation individual computers peripheral like printers modems or any external devices attached to the network should also be connected through the hub so basically hub is a multi slot connectors uh, connect into in to 
which a number of multi ports cards can be plugged in plugged to provide additional access as the network grows in the size that's a one place where like it's a like spike when you have connecting many things you know pins maybe many switches you might have seen like spike we have many switches we can connect exactly similarly the hub we have many components connected to the network so every equipment has connected to the network as to connect through the it is routed through the hub the hub provides a central connection point through which all devices that's uh, including workstation computer individual computers servers peripheral devices like any type of computer resources has to be communicated through hubs there are two types of hub one is called active hub another is called passive hub what is active hub means so this active hub electrically amplifies the signals as it moves from one connected device to another active concentrators are used to use like repeaters to extend the length of the network so this is active hub means so normally what happens means they it's like amplifier they accept from one devices and amplifies the signals and rebroadcast so this may be good for when you extend so when you want to expand the networks we can use a one active hub and connect and we have one more net two different networks can be connected through the active hub so this passive hubs allows the signals to pass from one computer to another computer without any change the passive hub they do not amplify this they send from one computer to other computers over the network hubs usually can support 8 12 or 24 pin rj uh, register jack 45 ports these are the different type of connections the devices you can connect so these are often used in a star a star wide ring topology and requires a specialized software for port management so we need additional software to function this so switch i think a switch is a device that is used to segment a larger network into two different uh, smaller network that's called sub lan or subnets uh, segmenting the larger network into smaller subnet prevents the traffic overloading in a network what does a switch means it's like so whenever the we have a larger network there is a possibility of data collusion so the data traffic will be high so now what we what they can do means uh, they split this larger network into two efficient working network uh, sub network so then these two has to be connected so there we use a switch it's switch is like uh, that's a, uh, that's how we can reduce the overload or traffic that is a switch is a responsible for filtering that is trans- uh, transforming data in a specific specific way and forwarding the packets between the lan segments uh, switch supports any packet protocols lans that are segmented through the switches are called switched lans so in in the case of ethernet lans they are called switched ethernet lans you can see here so this is a this is a switch you can see, you think like this the whole thing is like a switch so when you are sending from this computer to this computer or this computers means so data uh, provision you know impact can be protected so that is data collision can be prevented because it makes a proper path like this only otherwise means uh, without switch it, it is very difficult this uh, this not just i am giving an example with the switch how we can prevent so when you have without switch all computers are connected means there's a possibility with the switch you can split larger network into two sub network so that works efficiently how switch function means to insulate this transmission from other port the switch establishes temporary connection between the source and destination and then transmit the connection once the con- uh, conversion is done so normally it what happens means if this device want to send to this computer example so it establish connection first switch so once it is established and then you can takes place like circuit switching it start, data transmission takes place so there's something about the switch how switch functions now we have a repeaters what is a repeater means it's nothing but an amplifier a repeater is a device that amplifies signals being transmitted on the network so normally when you have a larger network and which it is for longer distance the signals electrical signal or any type of signals we have sent will be losing its strength then what we have to do means we have to rebroadcast it we have to repeat again that is amplify the signals and rebroadcast rebroadcast that is was done by the repeaters to power networks we need all these devices so this is repeater is a device that amplifies a signal being transmitted on the network it is used for a long network lines which exceeds the maximum rated distance for a single run that's why we go for longer distance so, so it loses its strength so we have to rebroadcast so over distance the cables connecting network lose the signal 
transmitted. So if the signal degrades too much, it fails to reach the destination. Or if it does arrive, the degradation of the message makes it useless. So repeaters can be installed along the way to ensure that data packets reach their destination. Repeaters are of two kinds, one amplifier and signal repeater. The first merely amplifies all incoming signals over the network. However, it amplifies both signals and any concurrent noise. The second, that's a disadvantage. The second type collects inbound packets and then retransmits the packets as if it were trans starting from the source to destination. So that is something about the repeaters. So next we have a bridge. So what is a bridge means? A bridge is a device that lets you link two networks together. A bridge can uh, smart enough to know which computers are on which side of the bridge. So they allow only those messages that need to get to the other side of the bridge. As packet arrives at the bridge, the bridge examines the physical destination address of the packet. The bridge then decides whether or not to let the packet across. So bridge is like a smart switch. So when you have a two different computer network, normally we have a larger network, they, they made it as a separate. Normally bridge is also same. So in the river we put bridge, segmenting different. So now we have two different networks from this network and this network to make the data flow, the movement of data much efficiently and quickly, fastly. What happens means, how it works means, whenever data has been sent, so we have packets, packet will be sent from one computer to other computer. Sometimes the destination may be within the segment or maybe it has to in other network, other network segment. Then bridge is like monitoring, like a traffic police and it comes and checks whether it is, is in the same or it is in the other, other side of the network. So other side means it allows to transmit the data, thereby preventing data loss due to collusion and preventing the data traffic and also secured way of data transmission. So that's something about the bridge. So next is a router. A router is a device that is like a bridge but can handle different protocols is known for as a router. For example, router can link Ethernet to a mainframe computers. If the destination is unknown to a router, it sends the traffic unknown destination to another router. So logical address which knows the destination. A router differ from bridge in many way that forms uses the logical addresses and later uses the physical addresses. That's so how router function means. Router means router. We have to establish a, a connection between the source computer and to the destination computers. There's already we talked about a switch and also we talked about bridge which allows. So this is more smarter than those two. So it, it sometimes we may be knowing the physical address where the computer is present or sometimes we do not know means the router is intelligent, smart enough to use a logical addresses from one router to another router, that may search and that may, we need a software also to function this. So compared to the hubs and switches, routers are smarter. Routers use more uh, complete packets address to determine, to determine which router or workstation should receive each packet next. So based on the network roadmap, we have a map, so routing table routes, routers can help ensure that packets are traveling the most efficient path to their destinations. If a link between two routers fails, the sending router can determine an alternative route to keep traffic moving. So this is how it works. That's what I said is smart enough. So first it has a uh, route map. We have an all computer network. All devices are connected through the cables and we have a uh, best path from source to destination. So once the source to destination is it, 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 it links that router with the workstation router, so where packets will be sent and received. So if that is failed to send means it finds alternative route. So traffic and it make alternate and making the traffic keep moving. If stop means what happens, data that line is always blocked and you cannot send other devices, other computer will not be able to send. But if it is not means it sticks to some other data will be keep moving, that's traffic keep keep moving. So this is how it works. So these are the uh, components which are needed for making computer networks. So next we'll be learning in the next class. Okay. It's quite boring but uh, try to understand. So try to read and write assignments. Read question you know, at the end of the chapter. Okay. We'll continue in the next class.